Uh, hi, am I speaking to Elijah? Yeah. Hi, Elijah. My name's Sam. Um, I run a YouTube channel called Samit. Yeah, I saw you. Um, I'm calling you because you're the winner of the Miata. No way, really? Yeah. Let's go! <laughs> um, so, uh, essentially I'll be in contact with you, well actually my lawyer will be in contact with you and we'll organize a whole bunch of stuff. Um, but yeah, literally I'm calling you because you're the winner, so congratulations. Thank you so much, you don't know how excited I am. <laughs> the reason why I entered was because since Father's Day is coming up, my family yeah. is like into cars. Yeah. And I wanted to get my dad a cool, fast car, a Miata. That's awesome. I think you guys can gather that that was me making the call to tell the guy that he won the Miata. I think it's awesome that one, seems like it's a fairly young guy, and two, that he wanted it to surprise his dad. I think that is absolutely amazing. It's actually something that's on my heart that one day I'd love to do that. I'd love to build my dad like his dream car if I ever get the opportunity to and just surprise him with it. So yeah, I don't know. I think that's really cool. I'm really excited to meet Elijah when uh, the car's ready and we get him out here. It's honestly mind-blowing because I was stressing out about it, maybe like the winner being in California and trying to work with them to get them here to get the car because uh, the whole giveaway, it's the actual winner's responsibility to get the car and take it back to them. America! Um, so the winner is responsible for getting the car and taking it to wherever they want it to be, right? So I was like stressing about trying to work with people if they were super far away. And then it turned out that the winner is actually in Florida, pretty far down south though. Um, so he's got a bit of a long drive, but I'm just really pumped because I'm going to be able to meet him, make some cool videos and stuff like that. And I don't know, getting maybe his dad's reaction would be sick. But all of that aside, yeah, I don't know. It just would have sucked if I just put the car on a shipping truck and never saw it again, you know what I mean? So anyways, I'm pumped about that and let's get on with today's video. This thing's pretty cool. I'm not a pussy. <laughs> I, I think my favorite thing about this is the TEs. Six lug. <laughs> so good. We'll catch up with Tommy later. Huh? A ute? Yeah, we'd call this a ute. We don't call it a truck. It's not a truck? No. So what's a truck? A truck is like a semi. Yeah. Like that's a truck. That's a, that's a lorry. A lorry? You <laughs> call that a lorry? That's in the UK. In the UK they call them lorries. Lorries? Yeah, that's semi. Yeah, I guess like sometimes we call them road trains like when they got like more than three trailers and stuff. But... More than three trailers? Like so this is a ute. This is a ute. Yeah, we'd so call this a ute. It's a car that's converted. No. This would be a you. Uh, uh, yeah, okay, okay. Here they call it a pickup. They call this a pickup? Yeah, we. I guess. I guess pickup trucks kind of used a bit in in Australia it's my now. Burnout vehicle. Your burnout vehicle? Well, now you got to deliver. Uh, I'm down. <laughs> Light her up. <laughs> we'll catch up with Tommy later. Um, but yeah, that thing's sick. So it's the next day. I'm definitely uh, kind of a little bit behind on my schedule. I have. Just being homesick really affected me, but I've decided to not focus on that whatsoever. I'm gonna, I really want to finish well here in the States and try to have a good time and not let it affect America! my like morale. America! We're literally just here doing that in the clip in the morning. Oh man. But um, I got to do some brake lines. We got to change those, um, uh, what are they called? Braided brake lines in on the front for the angle kit. I want to go over some more things on the car and just get everything ready to the point where there is nothing left to do. Like we could start mounting the oil cooler and stuff. Where literally all we are waiting for is the turbo because we can't fab up anything until we have that and know where it's gonna be. Come on, Cannon, you can do it. Yeah, so first things first, I gotta move all these cars out of the shop and then we're gonna do these braided lines which I have over here. Here are the brake lines here. We just got the ones for the front for the angle kit. Now these, um, they're not super long and extended. These are about an inch longer than the OEM ones. Um, I would probably recommend to get a little bit longer ones, maybe two inch extended ones, but these will do fine um, for what the car is set up with. If we had like, you know, longer LCAs and stuff like that, then we'd definitely be getting longer ones, but these should be fine. Just one inch extension should be great. So we got these, they're going on today. Um, but yeah, first things first, let's get these cars out of here. So these are the brake lines here that we're gonna be changing. Oh my gosh, what? When did that happen? Look at these cuts in the factory OEM line. I didn't see that before. Man, I'm so glad we're changing these now. That's insane. I don't, 
That must have been there before. Far out. Okay, so it's really easy. We're gonna undo this 12 mil bolt here, and then uh, we've gotta obviously undo it here as well. Um, undo this before you take this little clip out. That way it will has something to hold it in there and prevent it from um, moving around when you try to undo it. That's one of the biggest issues, I guess, that a lot of people um, get a little ahead of themselves on brake lines and stuff like that. So you're gonna put this in using a crescent, a crescent um, wrench here, or spanner. We call these spanners in Australia. I think they're called wrenches here. All right, so that's already cracked and loose now. So I'll be able to get that undone. Once again, one thing to help with bleeding these is try to switch out the line as quickly as you can, making sure your brake reservoir never actually runs out of brake fluid. So we're gonna quickly do that. I'll get the new line ready, and then we'll switch them out. Switch these back up there. All right. All right, that's that one off. Let's get this side done. Have I mentioned how much I hate getting brake fluid on me? I'm just spraying it everywhere right now, guys. <laughs> Far out. Okay. Gotta get these new lines in. All right. We're not gonna tighten this down because we want the fluid to flow through this line. There we go. And then we just snug this down. Sure, of course, we're in the same orientation as the old one. And we're good. You don't want to over tighten that because if you do, you're going to have a bad time. They will strip out. We'll put this nice little plastic thing over our bleeding nipple, which we will bleed the brakes in a little bit with. But for now, we are good. I'm going to go get a bunch of shop towels and clean up all this brake fluid that I just messed up everywhere. So now we gotta get the other side done. I'm gonna quickly smash this out and in three, two, one. And just like that, new brake line installed. And as you can see, I have the knuckle at full angle right now and we still have some slack here, which is the main reason why you need to upgrade to these uh, extended ones when you have these knuckles is the extra angle means that these just have to be that little bit longer. Also, it's just a smart idea to change to braided lines. They're so much stronger, durable. They get uh, a much better feeling in the pedal. These ones, as they get older, they tend to like swell up and make the pedal feel kind of spongy and they just get old and gross. And as we saw with that other brake line, I don't know what happened to it, but it was sliced open and, oh, here it is. It was all sliced up like this. Now, I don't know when or how this happened. It, it doesn't look like anyone was intentionally cutting my brake lines. I would say that these were just old cracks that then developed into that or it got caught on like the dust shield or something when we were in there doing knuckles, but yeah. Definitely a great thing that we changed these out because I did not know that those were sliced open like that. That's so sketchy right at that join too. Look how deep that one is. That's, that's, that's scary, honestly. So I'm glad we didn't do any practice days or test days or anything with those lines on there. So yeah, all in all, it's just a great idea. Change out these lines if, uh, if you can. Um, I would love to do the back, but for now we're just gonna do the fronts. Um, the backs ones looks like I just checked them to make sure there's no cracks or anything. They're in really good condition In fact, it looks like they were changed recently to new OEM ones, so they're good But the fronts definitely need to be done with this angle kit and the wheels that we're running Damn those coilovers look nice in there. I can't wait till we get to do a test day at this We're gonna probably uh, rent out OSW and take this thing out and just put it through its paces and make sure everything's all good I think I'm gonna actually wrap up the video here. I know once again, this is gonna be a shorter video than what I usually put out, but the Miata is getting closer step by step. I know it probably feels like I'm like uh, dragging this out and stretching everything out as much as possible. Um, but if I was to be quite honest, I literally am because I'm still waiting for parts to arrive before we can move into the next step. Literally once this turbo gets here, we can do so much stuff all in a couple days and fabricate everything up because that is the one thing that we need to work out where everything needs to go. So once we get that, 
We'll pretty much have probably I'd say about a week of solid epic content. This thing making massive power, doing some test runs and things like that. It's gonna be sick. And then it'll be uh, off to the new owner, to Elijah and his dad. And then uh, that'll kind of be it, I guess. So guys, I really hope you like this video. Smash that like button, write us a comment, and um, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. I know, once again, I apologize for these videos. I'm getting my headspace and focusing on not wanting to be home and trying to shake myself out of the whole homesickness thing. I really know that if I focus on what I'm doing now, I'll be able to end everything well and finish well here in the States, and that's really what I want to do. Um, Definitely gonna try and not have to do a long stay like this ever again over here unless I have my wife with me because that's I think that's the hardest thing like I've literally been living with my wife now for like Nearly five years. Wow. We've nearly been married five years and it's the longest I've ever been away from her for such a long period of time um, But anyways with that guys, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out. Jamata